Building ecologically is a tough challenge in the current urban context, but needs to be done. Let's take a look at this ecological house and I'll introduce you to what it entails. Well, to begin with, it means that you need to plant trees, native species, as many as possible. So, for example, down this street, which is about 200 meters long, since circa 94, one has been planting trees, and these trees are pretty tall now. They create a micro environment, bring birds, cool the place down, very important, increases biodiversity. Outside, there's a small water body, a baby's bathtub actually, filled with water and guppy fish so that mosquitoes don't come. This provides water to birds, squirrels, stray dogs, cattle. Part of ecological construction is responding to the environment. Further outside, there's a leaky well or a recharge well which picks storm drains water brings it in and allows it to go down this is managing storm water and increasing groundwater that's how a recharge well looks like way below it's about 12 feet deep and 2 feet in diameter but it does a good job of putting about 1 million liters of water into the aquifer instead of allowing it to go around. In the pots here are native plants, medicinal, herbal, the works. Many of them. And here's Punambir Kasturi daily dump and the design of a, the Kamba, the kitchen composter. So all kitchen waste from the house actually comes in this three pot system, gets into these pots, gets nicely composted and then back to the parts. So the outside does as much of the job as the inside. The gate of the house is of bamboo, grown inside the house, it's a replaceable material. And we take a quick look at the outside, that's a kitchen wastewater treatment unit. It picks up wastewater from the kitchen, pushes it through an oil and grease trap, a sand filter, into a polishing pond full of fish and lotuses and lilies and so therefore no water goes out of the house. And again on the outside, there's a rainwater harvesting system, the blue drum, there is a rainwater filter which filters water and puts it into the sump tank. And actually about 1 lakh liters or 100,000 liters of rainwater is stored through rainwater harvesting processes. That's a rainwater tank also up there, which picks up water direct from the terrace, then allows it to come through this tap for garden use the back you see a ferrocement filter. This is the side entrance to the house. A nice receiver like place where you can sit around. Good time. And this is the entrance to the house. There you see the house. Natural daylighting from the top, from the vertical windows. And Natural ventilation, you won't see a single fan in the house, let alone an air conditioner. The roof is called an arch panel roof, which is precast and made usually on site. Steel trusses are there to hang plants and paintings. Down below is a basement, and a solar lighting system there. As you come down, books. This basement, which is again naturally lit, provides all the earth necessary for the house construction. The earth from this basement was taken up and converted to earth blocks. And there was enough and more for the whole house construction. You'll see this nice table tennis board here. Earth floor with yellow oxide. That's the workspace. And all these are solar lighting systems using CFI bulbs. This place is a cool place, 23 degrees maximum, even in summer when the outside is 39 degrees. And therefore, it's the preferred summer capital of the house. As you go up, 
the basement. Come to the mid-level point. You find the kitchen here with a platform and the kitchen platform has natural lighting system to be. As does this big kitchen window to bring in light. Light and air, fresh air are important. Drawing room with its TV but also the rain stick, paintings and unplastered mud walls. No plaster, no paint in this house, which is ecological. Then we go up the steps. A nice terracotta mural 